Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to look at the first and most standard of all testing methods which is the Z test. Okay? In this Z test, uh, we will describe the test. It is a test for the mean in most cases. We will describe the test and we will also describe how to compute this p value. Okay? So, I will define it in, at some suitable place and we will show you in every example or every situation how you go about computing this p value for a z test. We will also see a few problems at the end and we will get a good idea of how to go about it. Okay? So, this is a standard method. I will phrase it as a very standard theory problem. There would not be any fancy practical example here. It is just a theory problem. Samples are given. Uh, say you are testing for the mean. How, how do you design the test? How do you find the p value for the test? Okay? So, that is what we will do here. Let us get started. Okay, so, here is general methodology of testing. Okay, All these standard tests fall into this kind of a framework. Okay, So, it is good to know the framework. So, you have n samples, uh, IID from some distribution. The first thing that most of these tests will compute is something called a test statistic. If you, if you remember, we always thought of acceptance regions, rejection regions. right? When this n samples are from some continuous distribution and all that, it is sort of difficult to specify the acceptance regions, rejection region. So, one of the very standard things that is done is, you first compute a test statistic. What is a test statistic? It is just a function of the samples, some function of the samples. You just look at the samples. Uh, it could be like, you know, sample mean, it could be the sample variance, something else also, maybe some other function that you compute from the samples, but it is just one number, okay. From the samples, you find one number. And your acceptance regions, reject rejection region, are specified in terms of this one numerical test statistic. Okay? So, instead of dealing with n random variables, you sort of deal with only one random variable. Okay? So, one is much better than n when it comes to dealing with uh, you know, analysis methods. So, you do one test statistic, you compute it using the samples and then you specify your acceptance regions, rejection regions through that one test statistic. You might say for instance, my test is reject H0 if T is greater than C. In, in our examples, we already saw something like that. If you remember the last example was something like this, right? You had a bunch of samples, we took the sample mean and we rejected or accepted depending on the sample mean being greater than 0, less than 0, something like that, okay? So, you may reject H0 if T is less than minus C, you may reject H0 if absolute value of T is greater than C. So, these are all like sort of some two-sided, one-sided, things like that, okay? Assuming null is 0, of course. So, clearly, the significance level alpha will depend on C and it will also depend on the distribution of the test statistic under the null hypothesis. Okay? So, remember what is alpha significance level? Probability of rejecting the null given the null is true. Okay? Supposing you took the some test statistic T and you took the test, uh, the rejection region to be T greater than C. Okay? Reject H0 if T is uh, Okay, so all is 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 this all this is should be if. I apologize for that. Okay, if uh, t is greater than c. Okay, so then uh, the right-sided uh, test for some reason uh, means for for if you pick that, uh, then your significance level alpha will be probability that t is greater than c given h zero. Okay, so you can fix your alpha and find c. Okay, so this is a very standard way in which you can do this, right? So we we've seen this before in the examples as well. Okay? So, this uh, just watch out for this framework, samples, test statistic, uh, acceptance rejection region in terms of the test statistic, mostly rejection region and then computation of significance level alpha, uh, probability of you know the rejection region given H0 is true. Okay? This is very important, let us let us go through this. Okay? So, first uh, the, the test, the Z test uh, typically applies uh, or is, is used usually with normal samples. You are testing for the mean and the variance is known. Okay? So, here is a typical example. I have picked one particular number. You can replace this number 4 with anything else like sigma squared or something, but I have just picked 4 in this example. You have n random samples, IID normal with mean mu and variance 4 squared. Okay? Your test statistic in this sample, in this type of Z test is always going to be the sample mean. Okay? It is 1 by n, x1 plus x1, x1 plus x2 till x n. Okay? Sample mean which we will denote as x bar. Okay? The null hypothesis 
I will take it to be mu equals 0, okay. And the alternative, I will take it to be mu greater than 0, okay. This 0 can be something else also. It could be mu equals mu 0 and alternative could be mu greater than mu 0, okay. So, that extension is very easy. Uh, this could be mu equals mu 0 and uh, h a being mu greater than mu 0 or mu less than mu 0. You see, you see it is easy to, uh, it is easy to generalize to these kind of cases, but, but I am picking this case just for illustration and you will see the generalization to other cases is, is quite easy, it is not very hard, okay. My test for this particular case is going to be, I will reject h naught if t is greater than c. Okay. So, how do you find c? We will find c. I mean, it will come, will come later, but c is some constant. It is some threshold which I am using for deciding the rejection region. Okay. So, notice how this ties in with the, uh, you know, mu equals 0, mu greater than 0, right. So, I have my 0 and I have my c. Okay. So, this is going to be my rejection region. Okay. So, my null is mu equals 0. My alternate is mu greater than 0. Now, supposing, you know, just to show you the generalization, supposing your null is mu equals mu naught, okay, so your null is mu equals mu naught and your alternate is mu not equal to mu naught, then what will you do? You will pick a C here, uh, if you want, you can even pick, uh, you know, you can pick a C1, you can pick a C2, if you like. Uh, this is not very common, I think, for normal samples. You just pick, uh, you know, mu naught plus c, mu naught minus c, okay. And you can say, you know, my rejection region, reject h naught if, uh, you know, um, t greater than mu naught plus c or t less than mu naught minus c, okay. So, this is how you will design your test. If, uh, if, the, if the null hypothesis is mu equals mu naught, alternative is mu not equal to mu naught, okay. So, in this case, it is just mu equals 0, mu greater than 0. So, I have done it like this, okay. So, you can see how you can change it, right. So, it is easy to change uh, for different scenarios. So, supposing your null hypothesis is mu equals mu naught and alternative is mu less than mu naught, what will you do? You go to mu naught and then mu naught minus c and your rejection region is only mu naught minus c. So, so you just adjust your rejection region depending on uh, what your uh, hypothesis is, okay. So, hopefully this is clear. So, I am doing it for one special case and for any other case you can easily extend also, okay. So, maybe in the problems we will see one of these other cases and I will illustrate it to you, okay. Okay. So, this is what is going on. Now, let us go through and see what happens, okay. So, I am going to do 10 different samplings, okay. I am going to pick n equals 10. I am going to do 10 different samplings. Okay, so, the first sampling gave me some numbers like that, second sampling gave me some numbers like that. I actually did this in Python, I just generated these samples and I computed the test statistic, okay. In the first time, I got the test statistic as minus 0.14, that is the sample mean, you can just add up all these things divided by 10, minus 0.4. Next one I got minus 0 0.25, minus 0 1.25, the fourth one was 0 0.23 and uh, the, the next one was 2.96, 3.1, 6.2. So, your null hypothesis is mu equals 0, alternative is mu greater than 0. Just, I mean, I, mean, I have not told you what C is, I have not told you what anything else is, but if you get data like this, what are you going to do? You are going to say in most cases that, uh, you know, you are going to accept null here, accept null here, accept null here, accept null here, maybe reject null here, reject null here, reject null here. This could be one of your, you know, maybe this is reasonable, right. So, I mean, it, it looks okay, but then how do you quantify, right. So, how, how, how solid are my decisions here, right. So, how do I, how do I quantify them, okay. It looks very clearly that this is much stronger than this guy, right. If you compare these two, when you got a 6.2, you can much more confidently reject than when you got 2.96. Uh, maybe 2.96 is okay, it looks, uh, looks okay. What, what if you get something like 1, or no, close to 2, right, so maybe 1.9 or something, okay. So, so it starts looking a little bit more ambiguous and overall it seems like how high the value of t is, right, the larger the value of t, you seem more strong 
in your decision to reject the null hypothesis, right? Mean was 0, the sample mean I measured is so large that maybe I want to uh, throw it away. So the question is how do you quantify this, okay? How do you quantify this confidence that we saw? When we saw the actual samples, we saw that t equals 6.2, we had more confidence in rejection. t equals 2.96, okay, maybe all right, but if you say 1.9, I'm, I'm like, you know, okay, all right? So th all this has got to do with the decision on C. Depending on the value of C, you may reject, you may accept. Supposing C is 2, 1.9 I'm going to accept, right? 2.1 I'm going to reject and 6.2 also I'm going to reject, right? C was 2 and the actual T keeps changing and depending on the actual T, I'm rejecting with higher confidence, lower confidence, okay? I want to be able to measure that. How do you measure that is the question, okay? So that's where this notion of p-value and all that comes in. Now let's look at this a little bit more closely, okay? So generally higher values of t are giving us more confidence. We want a way to measure this, okay? So first thing is let's begin with significance level. For this test that we had, what is the significance level? How do you compute the significance level? This is not very difficult. We've done it before. Let's walk through this very closely. Let's say you have 10 samples, iid, normal, mean mu, variance 4 squared. Significance level is probability that the sample mean, remember t is the sample mean, sample mean is greater than c given mu is 0, right? Now given mu is 0, x bar as a normal distribution with mean 0 and what is the variance? Remember there are 10 samples and I am taking the sample mean, so the variance will divide by 10, we will get 4 squared divided by 10, okay? So from here it is very trivial to do this calculation, x bar greater than c, probability of x bar is greater than c. I will divide by the sigma, which is 4 by root 10. Once I divide by the sigma, it is just the normal 0, 1. Remember this one has a distribution of normal 0, 1, right? So this is a standard normal and I will always denote z as the standard normal, okay? Hopefully you see this. So this is just a probability that the standard normal, right, the standard normal is greater than c by 4 by root 10. This is the standard normal, it is greater than this. So it is 1 minus the probability that the standard normal is less than this guy and that is just this, right. So root 10 c by 4, so fc is the cdf of standard normal, okay. So it's a very standard uh, problem of finding probability of an x being greater than a normal distribution being greater than a particular value, it's 1 minus, it's CDF. We know that the CDF is well known to us, right? The FC is a table or, you know, on uh, Python scipy stats, it will give you a of by a formula, okay? So the significance level for a particular C, you can find very easily. Given the variance, you can very easily find it. Here's a tabulation, okay? So, for different values of C, 0, 1.62, 2.08, 2.94, 4, etc., I am getting different values of alpha. Remember the n equals 10 is very, very important. If I change n, this mapping will change, okay? So this depends on n, okay? Okay? So if n is going to be changed here, this will also change. Keep that in mind, right? So remember this, 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 this root 10 is actually root n, okay? Okay, that's the number of samples and this 4 is actually the sigma square. So it depends on the variance, it depends on the n also, okay? But nevertheless, these kind of significance levels are very common. So in particular, these two are very, 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 very common, okay? So you always want to pick a significance level of 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. So this is uh, very commonly accepted uh, significance levels. So that gives you a C of 2.08 or 2.94. So in my testing with 10 samples, uh, if I'm going to pick my test statistic to be the sample mean, I want to reject null with 2.0, uh, with a threshold of 2.08. If T is greater than 2.08, I want to reject null and that gives me a significance level, type 1 error probability of 0.05. Or I may choose to reject null at 2.94, okay? So greater than 2.94, uh, I, I will have a significance value, a level of 0 0.01, okay? 
So, so hopefully this is clear. So, so the way, uh, you know, uh, so, so, so this is how people will phrase it. If you are doing a Z test at a significance level alpha, it means you are rejecting H0 if T is greater than C, where C is as above. So, 0 0.05, I want to do a Z test at significance level 0 0.05. Then I will have to pick C equals 2.08 for 10 samples. If it is 100 samples, then the no, C will be different, okay. So, this is how you design the test, okay. Standard Z test for mean, you will run it like this. Now, once again, this is for the special case of 10 samples, the variance being 4 squared and the hypothesis being mu equals 0 and the alternate being mu greater than 0, okay. So, if you change all of some of these things, you know what will change, right. It is a very simple thing to change and you can alter the alternative hypothesis, alter the acceptance regions, rejection region to get a Z test for the mean, okay.